Hi, my name's Starsky and welcome to From the Studio on Clubbing TV. In this episode, I'm going to take a look at something that looks like a little toy that's fallen out of the 1980s, but is actually a really capable little studio in a box. It's the Simple Trek from Sonicware. <laughs> What I was really doing in that demo is showing that's not just a standalone unit. If we look at the back of it, we've got full size MIDI in and out. I was using the out on that little demo track. We've got stereo in, one with a guitar line level, and we've got stereo as well as the power input. On the front, we've got a sync in and a sync out, so you can hook it up to your Euro rack or your vintage kit. And we've also got a little inbuilt microphone, which is adequate for what you need. I've used it in that intro track to record just bits and bobs that have been lying around as a little bit of percussion, works fine. And then we've got the inbuilt speaker as well, which is not exactly hi-fi, but it's good enough for what you need. And we've got a mini, or I think it's a micro USB. I always get confused which is which, but it just means you can hook it up to your PC or your Mac, and it works as a class compliant USB audio interface. Plug it in and it just does what it's meant to do. I've tried it in Logic, works fine. And here we've got our SD card and all the sounds that you hear come from the memory card. It's got no built-in memory. You need a memory card. It doesn't come with one, but you do need one. And when you first get it, you need to go into the system menu, you need to go to the card and you need to format and duplicate it. Something I didn't realize and spent ages searching the internet for all the stuff to put on it. It's all in there when you get it. And if you look at what I've been doing here, I've been moving around using these little sort of Nintendo Game Boy buttons. Also, you can move around on different menus using this or using that. So combinations of twisting and pushing get you through all the menu systems and there are a fair few menus in here as you'd expect with something with a screen this big. Cover it with two of my thumbs, but it only takes a couple of days to get used to it. How it works, how it works for you and how it works for your workflow. For me, it took um, a whole weekend of playing with it and this is after it's had the version two of the firmware. Earlier on, it wasn't quite so easy for me to use. There was just a few too many little extra menus and extra little clicks that I, that I was putting me off really, which is why I've had this actually for a, for a few months and I've only just started playing with it now. And that's why, but version two of the firmware, that's out now, really has made it into something much more usable. So let's take a look at what we've got here. It works just like Ableton or Roland Zenbeats or Logic's Clip View. We've got clips within scenes. Along the top, we've got the scenes. We can flick through them using these silicon buttons here, up to 16 of them. I've used 10 in this track here. And down the side, we've got the tracks. We've got 10 tracks, plus we've got three global tracks, and those global tracks sit underneath or on top of your scene, so you can put a whole vocal track or a, a whole piano take or a whole track of you just tweaking your synths or whatever on top of each of the clips and the scenes and that sort of sets it apart from most little groove boxes. We come down to these global tracks actually I will load in one of the factory projects um, and look you can flick around these using all sorts of buttons. Save the button project now. So we'll come down now in this new track we can see we've got a global track here if we go into it you can see we've got three separate takes we can zoom in and out just like you would in your door and then you can slice that up and pick the best take on each line or each word if you like let's actually plug it in so you can hear what's going on we can scroll in and out and we can select which of the vocal takes we want to use and we can cut them up as well and split them but as you see there we are using this tiny screen to do that and sometimes it does get a little bit difficult when you're using this to understand where you are in a vocal take because obviously the screen isn't ideal for doing stuff like this but a bigger screen would mean a bigger price tag it would mean a bigger unit and the battery life 
wouldn't be as good. So, you know, overall, it's fine. Now, if we go into the sampling menu, we can see we've got lots of different ways of sampling stuff in. So we've got the inbuilt mic. We can see me talking here. We've got a guitar input. We've got a mic input on the right. And these use these little two preamp knobs on the front. And these are decent quality preamps. They're not cheap things. It's a professional unit. Then what else have we got? We've got stereo in, we've got mono in, plus we've got USB. As I say, it's USB compliant, so you can play something from your laptop. It comes in there, and you don't need any audio cables. So let's try sampling something. I'm sampling via USB. I've got auto record on. And we now get the option to chop that up so we can put it on different pads to make a drum kit. So if we go to chop, okay, the value there is on six. Let's just put it up onto full and do auto slice. And here we've got all our different slices. Pretty simple. You can go in and you can manually adjust them if they're not quite right. Let's take that one and bring that a bit closer. And now we assign the different slices to the different pads. So I'm just going to do it really straightforward. So now I can program the drum beat. I can do that using XOX style programming. So put record on, we'll put this kick onto one, five, nine, and 13. So let's try doing it live this time. to the home page, tempo, metronome off. It's actually quite slick once you get used to it. What else should we look at? Should we try plugging something else into it? Here I've plugged in the Erebus from Dreadbox. I'm using MIDI from the sample track. If I go into the system and then go into this record screen here, we can... And I'm actually recording this directly all through the sample track. If we look here, here's the cable coming out of the Dreadbox that's coming in at the top there. The reason I'm showing you that is that you can use the inbuilt effects on the sample track on your external inputs. So if we look here, we've got an effects section going to function. We've got insert effects, send effects and master effects. Let's try something like that. Let's put it onto play. That'll do for now. Let's put some effects from the sample track on there as well. Going back into the effects, the send effect. What have we got? A tape echo. Okay. Got some feedback. The mix is about right. Let's go back into the mixer. Go to the external input. Send is on zero. Let's turn that up. And let's have a little play around with them. Tape echo, yeah. So that's how you set it up so that you can play external instruments. Let's then record that onto a looper track. If we go back to the home page and on track seven, we'll put a looper track. So if we go into record, it asks us what sort of thing we want. You can have a loop track, a single shot, an instrument track. These are sampled instruments and they're up to eight notes polyphonic. And then we've got drum tracks and MIDI tracks, but we want a loop track. Okay, press play. Let's record. That's it, it's in there. Let's turn this down. Haven't got the effects on there, so let's put the effect back on. Let's go into the mixer on track seven, turn the send up. And now the MIDI track's free to record something else from the Erebus. So loads of bits and bobs in there. I think I've shown pretty much all of it. Here's another nice little track I did as the sun went down.
was all created using samples, loops, and one shots. And I did sit outside with my little fire on, listening to it with the little speaker and created the whole little track. And that's what I wanted to show with that. So what are my final thoughts? Well, I think this is a really great little thing for the price. It does set itself apart from other groove boxes by having those three global tracks with the three takes. It's exactly how you work in a door and it's in this little box. We don't have things like envelopes, LFOs and filters to smash up your samples with and play around with. We don't have onboard synthesizers or onboard sounds really, just the samples it comes with. So it is slightly different to most things, but it, then again, it's not as expensive and it is really handy having the battery power. This is on battery power at the minute and you can just plug it in, unplug it, do what you like with it. It seems to be, um, I don't know, just a really flexible little thing. Fits in with your studio or you can use it sitting on the beach. Um, I really like it. So, you know, if you are in the market for this sort of thing, do check it out. Uh, and if you did enjoy that, don't forget you can catch it whenever you like on our Plubbing TV official YouTube channel on the From The Studio playlist. And if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments and I will see what I can do to answer them. And if you do like this sort of stuff, do check out my Starsky Car YouTube channel as well, where I've got a lot more in-depth and technical reviews and demos of various bits of stuff. And I will see you in the next episode of From The Studio.